So there's a lot of speculation to the future, and many of the players are leaning towards the game will be shutting down sometime this year. I wanted to put my outlook out there as I seem to disagree with the vast majority of people. Um, and I'm going to show you why. So in real life, I work with acquisitions and mergers ranging from five to $220 million, I think is my largest. I have a little bit of experience in the back-end financial side of a company and the type of KPIs a business must achieve in order to be attractive for acquisitions and mergers or any type of future funding or equity loans. So now when we dive into Zanga, are they making money as a company? Are their games profitable? That's where we pull up their quarter three financial results. They do not have to break down by game. Understand that. So all we can do is make it further assumptions, right? Now, when we look at our revenue and bookings, total revenue is up 40% in quarter three of 2021 at $705 million in revenue. Bookings in quarter three at 668 million and mobile revenue accounting for 97% of their total quarter three revenue 2021. There is an estimate on an analytics site that shows an estimated $300,000 in revenue for December 2021 with approximately 20,000 downloads on Dawn of Titans. That's an estimate, definitely not very hot but we cannot find that information very accurately. So very simply put, by looking at this, we can tell that the company is, yes, it's profitable. They are making money. They are profitable as a company and they have a huge cash flow. So even if they stopped turning a profit and went into a negative, they got over a billion dollars to run through. Um, so that's one thing to put out there about the security and stability of the actual business itself. Now let's look into their merge with Take-Two. My first note on this is going to be their massive gaming portfolio of and the intellectual property that's wrapped into all of these games. I mean, it is astronomical. Grand Theft Auto, Red Redemption, uh, Midnight Club, Max Payne, whatever that is, Civilization, Bioshock, NBA, 2K, Mafia, Borderlands, all these games. So you look and they have a massive portfolio and a boatload of intellectual property. Next is their plans for the actual portfolios. T2 has the huge opportunity to bring their console and PC games to mobile and add new game modes. And Zanga can drive free to play synchronous cross platform ambitions. Take Two has an extensive player base um, that can be used to enhance the mobile initiatives as well, right? So that's important to consider. They very well could take the game to cross-platform, right? That This is what I'm leaning towards, guys. Now, what are the benefits of the transaction? I mean, why would they do it in the first place? It's massive. They're looking at a missing $500 million in booking opportunities off their current base, meaning they believe they can pull another $500 million a year out of the current customers, current games, okay? They have $100 million listed for expected annual cost synergies after two years of closing. Now what that means is within two years, they will save operationally on operational costs $100 million a year just through their merger by creating efficiency, okay? In their operations, in their actual business operations. Now this allows a very clear path to bring Take-Two's games to mobile and cross-play integration. 
This could be huge. Also bear in mind, guys, this was financed by JP Morgan, okay? Now, what that specifically means, 2.7 billion was financed by JP Morgan. Um, so they have a proven track record of profit and they have definitely hit KPIs needed or they would have never ever been able to pull the financing needed from JP Morgan. The next thing I want to talk about is what else has Zanga been up to? In December 2021, Zanga partnered with a blockchain developer. That is a whole nother conversation and topic, but I do want to put up a few things about that and what that could actually potentially mean and wrap up, of course, to my conclusion. DOT will either run for a little bit and then close down or it'll end up being revamped after some time. The stagnancy could be while they're working on the back end, placing this game on blockchain technology, allowing a clean and scalable in-game economy. Now, you have to do a lot of research on this type of stuff. Basically with uh, Web, Web3, it's called development. This is gonna create NT, uh, NFTs for games, which is essentially Bitcoin. Uh, it's a token, right? It's a non uh, fungible token. Web3 could be absolutely huge for us. Basically, we could own sections of the game we play, or the NFTs would be transferable cross game, cross platform. So that being said, that being that Zanga has just invested into that, just merged with Take Two. My conclusion is they will either A, shut down the game because it's there is no hope, but it has a massive following. The revenue numbers on the game have always been weak, but the following has been strong. And moreover, they learned how to make the game dynamics. And the biggest thing is they were able to integrate their marketing software they bought um, into DOT. So DOT was a ginormous waste of money, honestly, as far as how much they made, but what they learned, how much intellectual property, how much they will make in the future because of what they learned with DOT is huge. So what I do believe will happen, I believe we will see a period of stagnancy. I believe there will be a total revamp with cross-platform. And I do believe 100% they are going to place it on some sort of a blockchain technology with NFTs, essentially making the game unhackable from the client side with integrated software to detect if it does happen on the server side. So all in all, I do think there will be a future to Dawn of Titans. I do not know how it's going to pan out. We're gonna have to fight it out and see. I hope you guys don't quit. I hope you stick it around and I hope to see you in the game. So we'll be out warring. Y'all have a good one.